Hi everyone, I'm Leo, and today I will be talking about cryptanalysis of candidate obfuscators for fine determinant programs. It's a joint work with Yilei Chen and my advisor Yu Yu. BIG plus 20 proposed candidate obfuscators whose computational model is not a circuit or Turing machine but a fine determinant program. A fine determinant program has strong connection with branching program and I will explain the connection later. In this work, we show cryptanalytic attack on that candidate. We also give a plausible fix which may defend against our attack. Let's start by talking about the indistinguishability of obfuscation. I.O. is a compiler whose input is the program P. It outputs the program P prime, which computes the same function as P. Moreover, if we have two functionally equivalent programs, P1 and P2, P1 prime and P2 prime are computationally indistinguishable. Now let me introduce the computational model used in the candidate I.O., which are branching program and a fine determinant program. Both of them can compute some function f with n bit input and 1 bit output. A BP is a DAG with one source node and one sync node. The edges of the DAG are labeled by xi, not xi, O1. Here xi is some input bit of the function f. The BP is evaluated in two steps. First, we delete those edges whose label equals 0 according to the input x. For example, if the input is 1, 1, 1, then x2 equals 1 and not x2 equals 0. So we need to delete the age labeled by not x2. Second, we count the path from the source node to the sync node. Since we set the DH carefully, the number of paths is either 0 or 1. For example, on input 111, the BP outputs 0 as there is no path from the source node to the sync node. An ADP consists of n plus 1 matrices along with an evaluate function. The ADP is also evaluated in two steps. First, it computes L of x which equals a plus sum of x i b i from i equals 1 to n. Second, it computes the determinant of L of x and feed it to the evaluate function as the input. Here, the evaluate function is identity function, so we omit it. There is a transformation from BPs to ADPs. Let m of x denotes adjacency matrix of a DAG. We can obtain L of x by deleting the first column and the last row of m of x minus identity matrix. Correctness is from IK97, which says that the determinant of L of x is equal to the number of paths from the first node to the last node. Since we can write x as 0 plus x times 1, and write not x as 1 plus x i times minus 1. L of x can be written as a plus sum of x i b i from i equals 1 to n. For example, the not x2 entry in L of x can be decomposed to a 1 entry in matrix A and a minus 1 entry in matrix B2. We can also observe that if L of x has nothing to do with some input xi, the bi matrix will be a zero matrix. This observation is useful in our attack. Now let me take a brief look at the BIGMS the obfuscation scheme. The scheme consists of four different functionally preserving transformations. They are IIS and noise. At diag, rerend. At diag is designed to prevent dishonest evaluation, and rerend is designed to help hide information except determinant and rank. Since our attack never evaluates dishonestly and only uses determinant information, we can only focus on RLS and add noise. Add noise will generate n noise matrices. 
Each entries of them are sampled from some noise distribution. We add two times of these matrices respectively to the matrices of ADP. To keep the correctness, the evaluate function also changes from identity function to module 2 function. BIJ plus 20 proposed the mode 4 attack to show that the scheme cannot be secure without IRS. The attack works by computing the determinant mode 4. Since the program is chosen carefully by the adversary, the only unknown part is the noise added in this step. Therefore, the adversary could learn the parities of the noise terms. To prevent this, IRS is designed to inject randomness into the carefully chosen program before add noise. As a result, this part may become unknown, thus the parities are hidden successfully. I will explain RLS by showing subgraph of BP or the matrix of ADP. RLS works by adding an intermediate node between every two nodes. Let VJK denote the node between VJ and VK. If there is no pass from VJ to VK, to keep the connectivity, we can add a pass between VJ and VJK, or add a pass between VJK and VK, or do nothing. Namely, we have three choices here. Similarly, if there is a pass from VJ to VK, we have four choices. Compared to the aforementioned case, we have one more choice, as we can delete the edge between VJ and VK and let the pass across the intermediate node. If the label between Vj and Vk is Xi, we can decompose Xi into Xi equals 0, which has 3 choices, and Xi equals 1, which has 4 choices. Then we can compose them together. For example, this stage appears if and only if Xi equals 0. Thus, the label of the edge should be not xi. Therefore, we have 3 times 4, which is 12 choices. Here we show a complete example of RLS. One can easily check that the RLS does not change the connectivity between any two nodes. The key observation of our attack is that the RLS cannot always inject randomness into every matrix. To be specific, if BI is a zero matrix, which means the program has nothing to do with XI, the resulting BI prime matrix of RLS will also be a zero matrix. I will show our attack by a two example. Assume that we have an ADP whose B1 and B2 matrix are all zero matrices. After RLS, the B1 prime and B2 prime are zero matrices too. Thus, when we compute L prime of X, which equals A prime plus sum of Xi Bi prime from I equals 1 to N, we have L prime of 0, 0 equals L prime of 0, 1 equals L prime of 1, 0 equals L prime of 1, 1. Then we use the aforementioned mode 4 attack. We have the following four equations. Although the RS helps hide the information of this term, we know that these four terms are equal to each other due to the property. Therefore, we can combine the noise terms, which are marked in red color. Evidently, the summation of these terms congruent to 0 mod 4. Thus, we can attack the scheme by choosing these two programs. For P1 prime, the equation always holds, while for P2 prime, the equation holds with probability 1 second. The aforementioned attack is quite restricted as it needs two zero matrices, which means the output must ignore two bits of its input. Therefore, a natural question is that can we generalize it such that it can work on more functionalities? 
When looking to the attack, we notice that we only need the, the equality of the minus, since we do not necessarily require the entries in the matrix to be the same. We do not need two zero matrices anymore. But how can we achieve the equality of minus regardless of the randomness injected by the ILS? Here we need our second observation. ILS is a functionally preserving transformation, which means it will not change the determinant. Therefore, we can cancel ILS when computing the determinant. When it comes to minus, since the computation of minus are similar to the determinant, we can quickly cancel the ILS, which means the ILS will not bring much uncertainty to the minus. And by choosing ADP carefully, we can completely kill the uncertainty of the minus brought by the ILS. The reason is that the intermediate nodes only connect with at most two nodes. Thus, the rows or columns of them are sparse. This property is helpful to analyze the minus. Let's start our advanced version attack by classifying the nodes and the minus. We have two kinds of nodes, original nodes and intermediate nodes. We have three kinds of minus. Minus associated with two original nodes. Minus associated with two repeated intermediate nodes. And others. The first case is minus associated with two original nodes. For example, when computing Vs, Vt minor, or in other words, computing the determinant of this matrix, we can add row Vj, Vk to row Vj first. This recovers the value of Vjk entry. Then the column Vjk has only one non-zero entry. Therefore, when we do Laplace expansion by the column, the determinant equals minus 1 times the Vjk, Vjk minor. Note that uh, minus 2e is congruent to 2e mod 4 and we can ignore the negative sign in the mod 4 attack. As we all know, computing the vjk, vjk minor means computing determinant after deleting row vjk and the column vjk. Up to now, we delete the intermediate node vjk as well as recover the value of vjk entry. We can perform a similar operation on every intermediate node. As a result, we conclude that the Vs Vt minor of L prime of x is equal to Vs Vt minor of L of x. That is to say, ILS does not change the value of this minus. Thus, the equality of Vj Vk minor of L of x implies the equality of Vj Vk minor of L prime of x. However, ILS introduces additional nodes, which means the additional minus. The second case is minus associated with two repeated intermediate nodes. This case is a little bit different as computing the minor is equal to deleting the intermediate node without recovering the value of VJK entry. Notice that the entry of VJK may be changed from 1 to 0 by the ILS. Thus, the minor is equal to either the left term or the right term. In the left side, the entry of Vjk is changed to zero, while in the right side, the entry of Vjk remains unchanged. To kill the uncertainty, we want the equality of these two terms. In the third case, when we compute Vs Vjk minor, the row Vjk has at most one non-zero entry. So, if the square equals 0, the minor should be 0. Else, if the square is 1, we can do Laplace expansion by row vjk, which is equal to deleting row vjk and the column vk. Up to now, we delete row vs, column vk, and the intermediate node vjk. So this minor is equal to 0 or vs vk minor of l of x, according to the first case. To kill the uncertainty, we want the Vs Vk minor of L of x equals 0. By further analyzing the three cases, we conclude that for L of x1 and L of x2 satisfying following three conditions, the minors of L prime of x1 and L prime of x2 are equal. 
regardless of the randomness injected by the RLS. We also give an example, use the conclusion. One can easily check that four possible JK, the JK minor of these four matrices are equal. Thus, our attack can apply on it. Note that the function f depends on all input bits, which means we do break the limitation of base version attack. However, we feel difficult to figure out the exact scope of functionalities on which our attack could apply, because understanding functionality by ADP model is not intuitive. To fix the IRS candidate, we aim to break the first observation. For example, when VJ, VK entry is zero, apart from aforementioned three choices, we can have other choices which depend on some XI such like this. Since XI and not XI cannot be satisfied at the same time, there is still no path from VJ to VK. And by labeling edges with XI or not XI, the matrix BI prime will not be a zero matrix. For future work, we are interested in the following two questions. Can we come up with some other candidates or revisions of the IRS? And can we achieve probable security in some restricted model which captures non-attacks? For example, can we prove security if the adversary can only perform mod for attack? That's all. Thank you for listening.